Hi guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I was going to do a little DIY in this video, but um, I have a lot to talk about. There's a lot of stuff. So I'm going to put that in a different video. So I hope you don't mind. So there's a lot of new things that are happening this weekend, and I thought I would just catch you up on a couple of them. Um, one, um, I got some new marbled papers done, so I want to show these to you. And two, I got my shipping tubes finally um, from Staples. <laughs> so um, they were delivered, so now I have shipping tubes. And so a lot of you have been asking if I'm going to be selling the marbled papers and the originals here, and that is a yes. I'm also scanning my favorites to make digital kits for those who want to print them out over and over and over again. So that is also happening. Um, but I'm going to be listing the originals soon. I'm getting all the pictures taken so that I can start listing them. They're going to be ranging in price from like Oh, five fifty to six fifty a page, depending. And then like the ones that um, aren't, I I say they're not up to par. They're not perfect. <laughs> well, none of them are perfect, but they're like seconds. Those are going to be about four bucks, um, and maybe even less. So the grain, just an FYI for bookbinders, the grain on this paper is lengthwise. And this is a 34 pound stock. So you can easily bind this into a book as um, tipped in end pages. You can also use these on journal covers, you know, all kinds of things. Um, in the US, as long as the tube and the papers weigh less than eight ounces, it's like $375 to $4, that, that, that's all. That's super cheap, right? And I can safely get six to eight papers in a tube. And that's a lot of paper. I'm not saying anybody's gonna want that many, but that's a lot of paper, right? Um, I mean, that's like 50 cents a sheet <laughs> to mail it. So that's actually really awesome. Um, internationally to the UK, I know, um, if it's less than eight ounces, it is $13.75 for a whole tube. Again, um, six to eight sheets of paper. So actually not as bad as I thought. I was wondering about these things, like a bat. Um, if it was gonna cost a whole bunch extra because it's a funky shape. Nope, post office don't care. Okay, so let, let me show you these real quick before I move on to um, the next thing. <laughs> So this is a, a type of Icarus wing marble. And I did this one in this really pretty orange and there's salmon and dark green and light green, like an olivey green running through this one. Uh, this one is um, a similar, similar but not similar <laughs> and it has the same wave to it but it has a chevron in the back and this one is done in purples and teals and pinks with some black in there I think this one's my favorite this one's so pretty so um, this one is done in like a cobalt blue black teal maroon and white but i just love how how this one came out i think it's pretty i love the colors love them here is another um this one will probably go in the seconds pile because there were a couple air bubbles that got trapped underneath so i mean it's still beautiful but all in all and this one is done in like an olive and a gold yellow and like a peachy pink teal and maroon but you can see where the little air bubbles got trapped which gives it character <laughs> um 
This one is done in oranges and greens and teals. Um, a little bit of a Spanish wave going on in, in this one. And here is one of those Turkish stone patterns done in like a russet brown, uh, white, and jade green. Here is another one of these Spanish wave, and it is done in a deep teal, and like a leafy green, and then a cobalt. I think it came out pretty cool. The waves in this one came out really, really wicked cool. Here is another, and this one is done in oranges and greens and blues. And I really, really like how the blue has like a variegated, like it's almost shaded. So it makes it look like some of these swirls are actually standing like 3D up above. Oh, it turned out pretty cool, and there's some of those gorgeous waves over there. I did film a little segment of, of me marbling, so hopefully I'll be able to get that edited and get it up soon. <laughs> um, these are the what you guys like to call mushroom caps. So let's, let me show these first. <laughs> so this one is done in like a peachy, peachy pink, teal, and purple. And then this one... Um, we'll go in the seconds pile. It did not come out exactly like I wanted, but the oranges and greens and like a maroon, like a pale maroon. Okay, on to the mushroom caps. Um, this one kind of came out kind of super cool. So um, this one, this one came out with multiple like little eyes. So you can see the little, oh, there we go, there this way. See how cool that, that, I'm trying to get in the camera. <laughs> Maybe I'm too close, there we go. See how the eye, how the radi the iris looks radiated? Oh, I think it's just so wicked cool. So we did this one in oranges and greens with some red. This one is more of like a chevron pattern with teal and like a purpley maroon and mushrooms. <laughs> Um, this one, uh, you can tell that this one's going to go in the seconds pile. It's extremely cool, or I may keep this one. Um, it's very cool, um, but my, so the water bath was starting to get, sorry, I'm like pulling it all over the place. The water bath was starting to get, um, uh, after you use it for a while, it's like it starts to break down. It gets too warm, it gets too much paint in it, whatever. And then the paint doesn't sit right on the top and so it kind of breaks up a little bit, which I would totally use this in a book. I don't even care because I think it's cool, but it would go in my seconds pile. So if that gives you like a, like a guess of what's gonna happen with my papers. Some of these, just an FYI, some of these I'm going to be keeping for myself so, so not all of them will wind up in the Etsy store. So if you go there and you, there's one that you particularly loved, I may have kept it to use it. If I think it's special, I may keep it to use it. I don't know, we'll see. And this is the last one. This, I think this was the last page I did. You can see how the color is really breaking up now and how my little mushroom cap eyeball thingies didn't stay quite so put together because the water bath was starting to get used up. You can only do so much. All right, my peoples. Let me put the pretty one out here. Um, so well, I'm, I'm going to put these away because I've got another exciting thing to show you. So pretty. Okay, let, let's move along. I'm not always good at moving along. So I promised some journals that are gonna be listed soon. Um, I was hoping tomorrow, but I let me, let me put a little asterisk on that and we'll talk about that in a minute. So I have these two guys um, that are finished at the moment. 
for just standard journals. This one has um, a ledger on the cover, and here is the back. The spine, they're, both of these have the same spine. They're like a burgundy spine. On the inside is some of my original um, hand marbled paper. And this one was this, um, the maroon and black with the little silver eyes. And this one is, I would call these are kind of semi-naked because I did do sewing in them. But, um, and I, I did do some little extra embellishments glued on, but I didn't like go overboard um, on these. These, I'm, I'm leaving the decorating and the embellishing for the most part up to the recipient. And so here's a nice big pocket in this one made with a, like a time card. Um, I did do some, like I said, some little additions. All kinds of really cool papers, very interesting things to look at. So um, one of the um, card catalog cards, um, this is an original from, um, it says it has it in the JF Kennedy Library, so that's kind of cool. And this is all sewn in as a little pocket. I love these pages, they were from an old typing textbook from back in the 50s. A little pocket here, sewn on, ledger papers, some neat notches taken out of them. There's some more sewing here. And a little, little my number cutouts put in there, my little number codes, and my stamp, and then there is the back. So there is the ledger. Set this one aside. I need some room, I need to spread out. This one is a beautiful, like a muted blue ledger. There is the back. And this guy also has hand marbled paper inside, done in gold and blue and black and a little bit of like a peachy red. And this one is um, almost, you know, very, very similar. It's got some interesting um, old files and some library cards sewn in. I've done some digital stamping, some collaging with some quotes. There's some more digital stamping. Here's just some little paper collage sewn on there. And some more stamping. Some ledger, 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 ledger. Oh, uh, hand marbled paper piece that I've sewn on there. And a quote. Well, it's script font is what it is, but it looks pretty cool. Some book pages. There's some like some ledger forms. Here is a map paper pocket all sewn. I've been having a lot of fun going through all of my random papers and getting them all out and using just a smattering of everything. Here's a really cool um, piece of a book page that I thought was a beautiful, This it was John Muir and he's writing about um, in Yellowstone National Park about some of the things he saw and it's just a nice little snippet there that I sewed on. Here is another pocket made out of the uh, card catalog card. <laughs> my stamp and there is the back so there is the blue one and then I have something super 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 special to show you so let me get them out so here is this one and here is this one and let me let me explain what these are these are the booksmith traveling journal kits and this one is 
made for a naturalist that likes to sketch like an Edith Holden type person. And then this is for a junk journaler. This actually isn't attached. I, 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 will, I will explain that in a minute. <laughs> but let me show one at a time and I will show you, I will show you what they are and what they entail. So on the cover of this one, you can see that there is this sewn, tied together envelope with a pair of scissors in the shape of like a, like a stork. And then this is on the spine, it says field notes. And the back is just, the back is just plain. So let me, let me zoom in a little bit here. All right. So if we untie the little envelope, take the scissors off for a second. Let's open this up and it's all sewn together and I put a label, a specimen label. So what this is for is this is a little collection area so that the naturalist who's going through the woods and looking at flora and fauna they can collect their little specimens in here. So I've put a couple of muslin bags and I've put a little envelope, a little number code, and a little clip up at the top. So these are some, some little areas that they can, if they collect leaves or flowers or whatever, this can go inside this little sewn envelope. And of course, you have to have scissors if you're gonna be collecting things, right? Because not everything is just laying on the ground, willy-nilly. So, that's what I did. I, I attached some scissors. So, this all comes, of course, with the, with, the, with the kit here. And I just tie it on. And whoever gets this, um, you, I mean, you can put the scissors wherever you want. You can put them inside the envelope if you want. I just thought they looked real cute on top. So we have this leather tie, so let's um, untie the side. You can see the cover, this particular one is done in um, a grungy fabric cover. But let's open this up and I, I will splain. So inside the front cover is this accordion sewn pocket. It has an expedition date label here. And inside this pocket, which is nice and deep, is a collection of things that the naturalist might need for sketching, for putting things together. I put some of my favorite Edith Holden things in there. I've done some little botanical illustrations from the 1800s little tag and then this is a little baggie and it's got I've added some little like labels date collected and I put um, I put some labels for like bees and so there's more little little doodads in there more little images and whatnot and so this um, this collection of things just slides right down in this little pocket for safekeeping there's a little number brad and a clip and this is a notebook that is removable. I have covered it in one of my um, original pieces of hand marbled paper with a label on the front. And I put a little clip up here in case you need to clip something up there. And inside, I made a, an example page and I used some mushrooms and toadstools and I attached them with, with some washi tape and a little label. The rest of the book is, is free and clear for whomever to finish up this little booklet. Um, you can take this booklet easily out of, of, the, um, of the kit by untying, here let me just show you. So there's a tie up here and you just untie it and this whole booklet comes out. And then that way you can you can easily journal in it you can collage you can do all kinds of things and then you just tie it back in if you see which i forgot to show you the um, fabric on the inside of this is some of my eco you know my faux eco dyed fabric that i have used and so there's leaves and water stains and all kinds of things i just i thought that was kind of it fit so i used it i was i was 
keeping this fabric to use in something and this just really, really fit the bill. So here is our little notebook and on the back I've got this little University of Toronto library pocket with a um, library card and another little label down here with a number code. And then on the back cover, we have a little wooden box and the wooden box is attached to the book permanently. It has a little label down in here. It has a little, um, one of these Tim Holtz, like, uh, you know, clipboard clips. And I've put in some of those sketches and then some skeletonized leaves. And to open the, um, the box, you just lift the loop off the little bead on the side and you open it up and there is all these compartments that are ready for the sketch artist to use. We have all kinds of charcoal pencils and some colored pencils. Is a whole set of pastels. This is an eraser and a pencil sharpener. And then up here we have some butcher's twine, some washi tape, some paper clips and binder clips and all kinds of things. Um, inside here is some, is some uh, like a list if you need to keep a list of things that you want to keep in here or whatever. Um, but this box is made by yours truly from scratch. And uh, it's a little, like I said, it's a little wooden box and it's attached permanently. The little clip here is so that you can, if you're working on something, um, you can put a piece of paper in here and work from this area or maybe you're writing or whatever it is. It's like a little, little easel that you can use. So that is this one and this one is a traveling journal kit for the nature lover or naturalist. So that's the first one. And this is the second one. And like I mentioned, this one is more for a junk journaler. And so um, this is not attached. That will, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put anything on the cover. So I figured, you know what? I'll just send this along with it and the person can put it on if they would want to. Um, it has beautiful, beautiful images on the front with a pretty spine and the uh, word collector inside of a book plate. And inside this one, it, it ties with this cotton trim, this half inch like woven, woven trim. And inside this one, we have a massive pocket again inside this, the word collections down here. And I probably shoved this too full, but I was kind of, you know, going to town. So there's all kinds of things that the junk journaler may need to um, decorate pages. There's photographs, there's ephemera, there's some little Tim Holtz, the, the photo strip pictures, there's a library card, some craft paper, there is a card of trims that I've added. There's a little tag on the edge of that. There is a little envelope and it is labeled sorry and inside this little sewn folder is vintage sorry trims and I just keep it closed with that. There's a piece, the remnant of that hand marbled paper that went on that other notebook and just some tea stained paper. So all of this stuff goes in this pocket and the junk journaler has all of these goodies to play with and to use in creating their junk journal. Let me shove all this stuff back. <laughs> like I said, I probably, uh, you know, you know, overstuffed the pocket, but it's, it's okay. It's all right, it's all right. Whoever gets this can unstuff it if they want to. <laughs> And inside this one is this notebook and it's a day book. And inside is a little miniature junk journal. So it's not decorated, but it has all of the papers that I like to use and it's ready to be decorated by the traveling junk journaler. And again, 
We find the middle. There's just a tie up here. And then let me, let me, let me. This video is gonna be like a year long. So you just untie it and then the book comes totally out just like this. And then to put it back in, I just usually find the middle-ish and you just lay it down right there. You bring this, this piece of twine up to this one and you just tie it in. That is as simple as that. And then that way um, you can, if you use up this book and you put in, you can put in another one. You can make another one. Okay, and then, and here is the little art box for this one. And this one has a binder clip so that this is just a little um, example of a collaged page that I was working on. So just a little example that will stay here. And we just untie this little, this little tie that goes around the bead and we open it up and inside, this is um, a super duper old page from a book called Old Salem Crockery, like wicked old, that I put in here. And inside here, we have all kinds of goodies. So I put a piece of felt on top of here, and this is a little compartment for some charms and some buttons. Here's some little miniature like clothespin type things. Um, little labels, there's little keys, there's brads, there's gypsy bells, there's all kinds of little things in here. So a little tag, but this little piece of felt just kind of keeps everything situated in there. We've got washi tape, we've got pencils and pens. Oh, see, another charm goes in there. We've got pencils and pens. We've got some butcher's twine and some uh, cheesecloth ready to sew in. You've got some thread in like a dark blue and a uh, an, a, bleh, an eraser. I'll get it, I'll get it. I have made a little miniature um, needle book to keep your needles safe and sound. And so, this is what it looks like. Let me untie it here. So it has this little collage on the front and sewn all the way around and you open it up and there is some wool felt on the inside in this pretty blue with this olivey green and there's a side for short needles and then there's a side for long needles and it's all sewn together and then this way your needles for sewing on your pages or sewing on embellishments and charms and that kind of thing. All that is safe and sound and not rattling around somewhere in your little supply box. Um, there's also another um, little card with some thread and then inside this little pouch is your pair of scissors. You gotta have scissors, man. And I just put them in this little, this little muslin bag and that just goes right in there with the needle book and that thread. And of course, you are welcome to move anything around. And then this is also a place where you can also put, um, put other papers underneath this binder clip on the inside of this box as well. This box is um, just like the one in the other book. It is made out of wood, but I um, put a top, more of a junk journal top on this one. This is just some scrapbook paper that I had of just some collaged items. Um, but the whole thing is made out of wood and stained and all put together. So these, um, these traveling journal kits, um, I decided that I would go ahead and film a course on how to construct these. So the course has been filmed and I am going to finish editing that shortly. And then it will be ready to be loaded up on Teachable with the rest of the other courses that are up there. 
So let me let me see if I can remember everything. Um, in the class, we're going to be making this exact book. So this kit right here is the exact thing that we make in in the class. So this is this is the guy. This is it because the construction is is very similar as far as I mean your your book cover on the outside can be done in different ways but everything you know you've got your pocket for stuff you've got your notebook that's removable you've got your art box so everything has a similar construction so but this is the one we make um, the course is going to be quite extensive because of all the elements involved um, there's a lot of pieces parts here but some of which are um, built on techniques that I've taught in other classes so while I would consider this an advanced class um, if you've taken my courses before you may find some of the elements a little easier um, because um, I've built on those those techniques that I already use and love so just an FYI um, the materials list is going to be comprised of items that a crafter may normally already have on hand so you might have to go to the craft store or amazon.com to grab something but there is nothing in this project that is out of the ordinary or you know hard to find or anything, nothing like that and then printouts will be included the templates um, the this daybook printout will come with the kit so that you can um, you can make you can make this dude um, let's see and if you will afford me the luxury of a couple of days I will have the course um, edit to finish edited and uploaded and then all of these books um, that I've just shown you so these two kits and these two um, ledger books um, all of these will be ready for the Etsy store plus um, another kit because I have another another one of these that I am working on right now um, it's not quite finished but if you'll give me just a couple of days I can get that finished up and then we'll have three kits and at least two books I have another book that's yeah, halfway done so we'll see if I could get that one done too so does that sound good is that is that a deal <laughs> Um, I really appreciate it. I know I promised some for this weekend, but I kind of wanted to fit this in. So, so please forgive me and, and I will make it up to you. I will make it up to you by a really awesome DIY project very soon. How's that? Okay. So let me get back to work. I will get back to work and I will stop gabbing. And in the next video that will be coming up within the next day or two, I will let you know that the marbled papers when they're listed um, I'll let you know when the kit um, all the kits are done and the books are done and those are going up on Etsy and then also that the uh, course has been uploaded and and ready for those who are interested in learning on how to make a traveling journal kit <sighs> that was a lot right that was, that was a lot um, so thank you for bearing with me today and um, I've had great fun making these and so I hope you like them as much as I do. I hope it's something that you think you might want to learn how to do. It's, they're adaptable to so many different kinds of themes and projects and so many different ways that um, I hope you like it as much as I do. Okay kids, big huge love from Nick and I will see you really, really soon.